Welcome to Gospel Preaching, a presentation of Gospel Time Ministries Incorporated. I'm Dave Rigg, coming your way from my home about six miles north of Albion, Illinois. Scripture for today's message comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. I'm going to start reading at verse 41 and read through verse 44, as always from the New King James translation of the original Greek text. So Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 41. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Finally, verse 44, For they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Would you pause just a moment with me for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask for your blessing again on the reading of the Holy Word. And I pray for your guidance, Lord, that I might deliver this message today in the way that you want it to be spoken, and that you would send this message, Lord, to the people who need to get it. This I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Well, let me ask you a question. Here on Gospel Preaching, have you ever, since I started doing this about two or three years ago, have you ever saw or heard me do a sermon here on Gospel Preaching on the subject of giving? <laughs> I can hear just tell you the answer is no. In all this time of doing these gospel preaching messages on Sunday mornings, this will be the very first time that I've ever preached a sermon on the subject of giving. I'm doing it today because that's what the Lord laid on my heart to preach in today's message. And I think I know why that uh, after not doing that. And I'm, let me say this, very seldom during the 30 years that I spent in the pulpit in two different churches did I ever preach a sermon on giving. Maybe a few times, but not much. So why now you, does it seem that I'm being called or urged by the Lord to preach a message on giving today? Obviously, there are some people in the church that you might attend who would be considered big givers to the church. They can do that because God has blessed them to be able to have lots of money. So they, they can give lots of money to the church that they attend. Obviously, there are probably some people also in your church that cannot afford to write out a big check every Sunday morning and put it in the offering plate or open up their uh, wallet or their purse and drop in lots and lots of cash. They just can't do that because they just don't have that much money. And it's easy for us to believe that it's the people who have lots of money um, and can give big to the church that Lord has the Lord has blessed them more then he has blessed the people who can only give a small amount. But our, our text to here today from Mark chapter 12 shows us it's not the amount that we give that counts. It's the condition of the heart in the person who is giving the money. The title of this message today is, Are You a Giving Warrior? or a giving worrier. All right, let me, let me rack that up and shoot it again. Are you a giving warrior or a giving worrier? Well, as the case is in most of these gospel preaching messages on Sunday morning, I've got a story to tell you here today. And this story goes way back into the 1920s. Homer was a very poor farmer but he loved the Lord, and he believed in giving generously to the church where he attended every Sunday morning. It was Friday, and Homer needed to raise enough money 
to give what he thought was right to the church when he went to church Sunday morning. So he went out to his hen house and he loaded up a coop full of chickens and then he placed the crates of chickens on his buckboard wagon and hitched up a team of mules. Knowing that he had lots of chores to get done that day, he realized he wouldn't have time to go to town to try to sell these chickens to raise money to give Sunday morning to the church, so Homer asked his son Jed to take the chickens to town for him and then, of course, sell those chickens in that crate at the general store. We'll get more of that story a little bit later on. Here's point number one. Some people are giving warriors. That's warriors. W-A-R-R-I-O-R-S. Warriors like Indian warriors, okay? Again, in our text here this morning, Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 41. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Let me ask you this question, friend. Does the giving that you give to your church on Sunday morning, does it really cost you anything? Let me read to you from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 through 5. Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great, because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now for the house of my God I have prepared with all my might gold for things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, onyxed stones, stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver, 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses, the gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver, and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of craftsmen, who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Now what I have just read to you is King David here making a contract to give all he could possibly for the building of God's house, a temple. All right, back to my story of this old farmer who didn't have much, but he decides he needs to sell some chickens so he'd have money to give to the church on Sunday morning. Well, his son Jed climbs up into the wagon and he hollered at the team of mules, get up. All was going well as Jed drove the wagon down the road to town. But suddenly, the bumpy dirt road to town began to be a problem. And then things got worse. Suddenly, right there in front of the mules, a covey of quail flushed at the side of the road, causing the mules to take off in a dead run. Try to picture that in your mind now. When Jed finally got the team of mules stopped, he looked back and he saw that the crates of chickens had fallen off the wagon. The crates had broken open and the chickens got loose and they were scurrying in all kinds of different directions. Hoo-hoo. Back to my story a little bit later, but let's move on to point number two. Now, in the first principle, I was talking about people who are giving warriors, and certainly the story I read to you of David giving all of this gold and silver and all this stuff to build the temple, you'd have to say that he was a giving warrior, right? All right, well, point number two, 
There are principles for being a giving warrior. Principles for being a giving warrior. Psalm 24, 1, a psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. So in other words, everything in this world belongs to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So again, this is a verse telling us that God owns everything on this earth. Now, what happens when God's people give generously? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 has the answer for us, starting at verse 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God, for the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God, while through the proof of this ministry they glorify God for the obedience of their confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. Now what's the lesson from that verses, uh, bunches of verses there that I just read to you? It's very simple. God prospers us not to raise our standard of living, but our standard of giving. Well, let's get back to my story for today. Well, again, if you've been not paying attention or you just joined in this sermon, let me get you back and get you caught up here. This old farmer didn't have a lot, but he liked to give to the church. He, was, he loved the Lord. Well, on Friday, he needs to sell some chickens to have some money to put in the offering plate on Sunday morning. So he goes out to the hen house, grabs up a bunch of hens, puts them in wooden crates, puts them on his buckboard wagon, hitches up a team of mules, and because he's busy, has lots of work to do that day, he tells his son to take these chickens to town and sell them at the general store to raise some money, okay? So Jed takes off with these team of mules pulling the wagon. Suddenly, a covey of quail flushes in front of the mules, and they take off in a dead run. When Jed finally gets the wagon stopped, the crates are not there. They've fallen off the wagon. And in falling off, these wooden crates have broken open, and the chickens are all out, and they ran in all kinds of directions. All right? All right, let's get back to the story and see what happens next. Well, Jed... He quickly repaired the wooden crates with some sticks that he found nearby. And then he began the task of running all over the neighborhood, scooping up the chickens and returning them to the crates. Hoping that he had finally found them all, Jed drove on to town and sold the chickens at the general store. More of that story later on, but let's move on to the third point. There are rewards for giving warriors. There are rewards for giving warriors. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Give, and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And I'm sure if you've ever heard that verse used by a preacher, in a sermon, he also used a verse out of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So clearly, these are verses that tell us that God will pour his blessings upon you if you give. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 19, Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither 
moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Let me turn the page here. I've got more to read. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed, arrayed like one of these. Listen to verse 30. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Friends, Jesus clearly tells us in the verses I just read to you that we are not to be a giving worrier. Not a giving warrior, but he wants us not to be a giving warrior. W-O-R-R-I-E-R. -R -E and I'm afraid that it's very easy in this world that we live in today to be, based on the way we are willing to give to our churches and to other Christian ministries, that we are giving warriors. In John chapter 14, verse 2, Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And then in Revelation 22, verse 12, and behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. Now, friends, don't get twisted off on that verse. We are not saved by our good works. We are saved by grace. Amen? But there are rewards we will receive after we die that are based on our works, okay? Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Friends, the scriptures are very clear. We are saved by grace. We are given eternal life by grace. There's no way we can give to the church enough to get into heaven. There's no way that we can do enough good things to get into heaven. But there will be rewards that we received after we die based on how we lived our life, how we were willing to give to the Lord's ministry. Friends, Jesus will reward you personally. Well, let's get the conclusion to my story for today. Jed knew that his pa was selling those chickens to raise money to give to the church on Sunday morning. And he dreaded getting back home and telling him what had happened on the way to town. When he arrived back at the farm, Jed unhitched the team of mules and went inside the house to face the consequences. Pa, he said, the chickens got loose when the mules ran off after those Quails scurried out in front of us there. And when I got the wagon stopped, the, the crates had fallen out of the wagon, broken open. The chickens ran all over the place. And I did manage, Pa, to scoop up 12 chickens. <laughs> the old man beamed and he said, Well, son, you did good because you left town or you left home to go to town with only 10. <laughs> well, friends, in closing, you can draw your own conclusions from that story. And I would say to you that God sometimes moves in very, very mysterious ways. He promises to bless us when we have a cheerful, giving heart. 
Homer Gaskins, there's no doubt about it, was a cheerful giver to his church. He certainly was not a giving worrier. Homer was a giving warrior, and God blessed him for it. I've got to close with a simple question. What kind of a Christian are you? Are you a giving worrier, worrying that you're not going to have enough money if you give to the church or to a Christian ministry as you know you should? Or are you a giving warrior? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come each week here on Gospel Preaching with messages you lay upon my heart to preach. I pray, Lord, now you will send it out to the people who need to get this message and that it might inspire them, Lord, to give to their churches, to other Christian ministries in the way that you would want them to. This I pray in Jesus' name and amen. Well, thank you for watching Gospel Preaching today. Hope you're telling other people about these weekly messages that uh, are right there on YouTube and also on Facebook. And there's a long list of all these messages I've preached here on Gospel Preaching for the past three years or so. You can run down the list. If you see a title that catches your interest and you didn't get a chance to watch it before, click on it and watch that message and see how the Lord sends a message to you as well. My prayer is that the Lord will give me another week of life and I'll have another opportunity, opportunity to come back next week with another message from God's Word. In the meantime, my prayer is that the Lord will richly bless you.